Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to do the mid-year book freakout tag because you're not going to be seeing 5,000 of these in the next couple of weeks. So I figured I'd film one for you. This is my first time doing this tag. This is a tag that's been done three, four years across booktube. I don't even think the original videos are still out there. Um, it has 13 questions and I'm not going to pull books and show them to you. In some cases, I don't even have the book to show you. So keep a look at the screen. You'll be seeing things pop up. Okay, so let's jump right into it. The first question is the best book you've read so far in 2019. That's easy. That is My Lovely Wife by Samantha Downing. It's a book that I read very recently. It's my new favorite thriller of all time. And everybody you should just read this book. If I had to go with a second book, it would be Cabin at the End of the World by Paul Tremblay. The best sequel that I've read so far in 2019, I have to be honest with you, I think I've only read one sequel, maybe two, but I do genuinely like the sequel that I that is that I am calling to mind. It is Getting Schooled by Emma Chase. It's the follow-up to Getting Played. These are contemporary romance novels. They're hilarious and adorable and full of amazing characters that you want to make your best friend. So if you're at all interested in that kind of book, then I would definitely look into this series by Emma Chase. The next question is a 2019 release that you haven't read yet, but that you want to. And that's easy. Uh, every book, no, every book released in 2019. No, I think that the one that I kind of has worked its way up to just this spot in my mind that this must read place in my mind would be The Hunting Party. This is this is a book by Lucy Foley and it's a closed mystery. It's a mystery in which, you know, all of the players are kind of stranded together or locked together. And I'm just really, there's something about it that sounds so appealing. I'm really looking forward to reading this one. I hope I, I genuinely hope I get to it soon. The next question is what is your most anticipated book set to release in the second half of 2019? And my goodness, I mean, Riley Sager with Lock Every Door. Um, Ruth Ware has a new book coming out. Uh, the third book of the Nevernight Trilogy by Jay Kristoff um, is coming out. And that's just to like October. I don't even know yet what's coming out in November and December. The Wanderers or Wanderers by Chuck Wendig. Uh, the Chain. Um, all I mean, just watch my anticipated releases videos and you'll know exactly what books I want to read really badly. I don't put anything on there that I don't really, really, really want to read. Uh, the next question is, what has been your biggest disappointment so far this year? And that's simple to answer for me. That's Nosferatu by Joe Hill. I cannot explain to you how much I thought that I would love this book. And I cannot explain to you how hard I DNF'd it. Uh, the biggest surprise so far this year for me is probably been Inspection by Josh Mallerman. Mostly because I didn't, I, it's the second Josh Mallerman book that I've read and I didn't think very highly of Bird Box. I read it and finished it, but it definitely was not going to be my favorite horror novel. And so I went into inspection with pretty low expectations, thinking that Josh Mallerman was not going to be a very appealing author for me. And I really liked it. I mean, I think I ended up giving it four stars and by no means is this such an extravagant surprise that I'm dumbfounded or anything, but it is probably the book that I went into with the lowest expectations and then had the highest return. Uh, the next question is, who is your, who is your new favorite author from 2019? And of course this could be a new author, a debut author, or it could be just new to you author, in which case I have two new to me authors that I'm really looking forward to reading more from. The first is Peter Swanson. I read The Kind Worth Killing this year, which I really liked. It. I had no idea that Peter Swanson wrote the kind of thrillers that I love. And so I can't wait to read more Peter Swanson. Obviously, I need to read two or three books before I can 
officially declare him a favorite author, but he is an author with an amazing amount of potential. Uh, likewise, in the romance category, the romance side of things, I read two, no, I read three books this year by Emma Chase, who was a new to me author, two of which I absolutely loved. Again, getting schooled and getting played. The third one I read, Royally Screwed, which was the first in her Royal series. I didn't love it, but I didn't hate it. And it definitely wasn't anything that's going to make me change my mind about Emma Chase. These, she's, her books are beautiful and funny. Oh my God. I really enjoyed getting to know her as an author this year, for sure. Uh, the next question is, who is your new crush? Your new book crush, character crush, uh, fictional crush. That's the word I'm looking for. Who is your new fictional crush out of the things that you've read so far this year? And I went back and forth. This is probably an easier question to answer for people who do read romance. Um, or things with romantic subplots anyway. I went back and forth and, um, I, I, I'm going to go ahead and land on, no pun intended, Briggs from Heartbreak Warfare. So here's the thing. Okay, Heartbreak Warfare is a pretty heavy story. It's a very weighty story. And it deals with uh, prisoners of war. Briggs and one of the females in his unit are captured while they're at war. And so here's the deal with Briggs. He is the guy... He's, he's the guy that witnessed a woman at her most vulnerable. Out of all of the books that I read, like, this woman was beaten. This woman was degraded. This woman almost died. Like, he is the romantic hero of a story that that shows a woman at her most vulnerable. So I know that he handles it well. I know that this particular character is a keeper because of the way that he handles her through that situation, because of how delicate he is and how much of a bond is born from their shared experience. So, I mean, it's a, it, yeah, like I'm sure he's cute too, but he's definitely just a keeper. So he's my new favorite crush. Like if I, I'm as someone who's not very comfortable being vulnerable or who's easily embarrassed and easily mortified. Like I want a guy like Briggs who can handle it. Uh, that's of course an extreme scenario. Uh, but yeah. Next is who is your new favorite character in general from what you've read in 2019. That honor has to go to Stella from the Kiss Quotient. It is so refreshing to see not only characters on the autism spectrum, but also to be able to relate to a female uh, character so thoroughly. She has so many neuroses, <laughs> quirks. Uh, and yes, they can be attributed to a specific condition that she suffers from, but in general, like, I, I felt her. Like, I, I feel you, Stella. I get it. Like, you and me, we need to talk because we, we definitely have some similarities and some things. Like, uh, the next question is, what book um, so far this year has made you cry? And there have been a couple. There probably have been a few. But nothing made me cry harder than The Last Letter by Rebecca Yaros. I talked about this book very recently. And I guarantee you, unless you are made of absolute concrete, then this book will probably make you cry. It is filled with more tragedy and heartbreak than anything that I've ever read in my entire life. And I don't, I, I can't handle it. Like, I, I can't, it wasn't even a good cry. Like, mm. no, I mean, it was, this was sad, you guys. It was sad. So, um, to make us feel a little bit better, uh, what is a book that made you happy so far in 2019? Um, uh, the most fun that I've had with a book this year is Getting Schooled by Emma Chase. And just, it had been so long since I had laughed out loud at a romance novel. And it has, it's happened, you know, it's not unheard of, but 
even the romance novels that I love and the romance novels that I love to reread are not romance novels that make me laugh out loud so much. And this was just the best time. I had the best time with this book. And there's, I want to have that best time again. Luckily, I just read the second one, which was also an equally fun time. But uh, yeah. The next question is, what has been your favorite book to film adaptation? And I don't, I've seen one. I have seen one book to film adaptation this year, and it was Bird Box. So by default, that's my favorite. And honestly, I didn't like the book. So the film, um, the film could have gone a lot worse than it did. I know that there are a lot of people out there who were not, were not okay with the film. And those are typically people who really love the book. But I... I was okay with it. I didn't have a problem with it because the book didn't really mean much to me in the first place. So it's Bird Box by default. Again, I'm not a huge adaptation person. Uh, next is what is the your favorite review video of your own from 2019? I think it's from your own. I guess nobody specifically said, but yeah, that's how I take it. Um, definitely The Cabin at the End of the World by Paul Tremblay because I had just finished that book. It was fresh and I was so amped up about this book and it was like I was still putting the pieces together in my head and 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 still processing this book while I was reviewing it and I was so excited and so amped up. And if you've watched any of my videos, you know that I am not a high energy booktuber. <laughs> I'm like the sloth of booktube pretty much. And so when I can reach that level of energy and excitement about something, then I'm pretty happy with the result. So if you haven't seen it, go back and watch that video. That's me probably at my best. That's about as good as it gets. And if you don't think that it's good, then yeah, I don't really know what to tell you. This next one was really hard for me. It is what is the most beautiful book you've read or been gifted or bought or whatever in 2019. And to be honest with you, I don't, I don't know that there is a book that I'm like, wow, this is just beautiful. I mean, there might be, there probably has been. If you go back and watch my hauls, I might comment on how pretty something is, but I can't necessarily put my finger on one right now. So I went back through the books that I'd read in 2019. And as odd as it is, I think my favorite cover from the books that I've read so far is Dread Nation by, by Justine Ireland. Because, um, I think it's a, just a beautiful picture. Like I, it's, there's something very beautiful. Not only is the model beautiful, but it, this cover just, it sets the tone. Like, you know, it's historical, you know, that there's something at stake. It's dark. It seems kind of hopeless. Like I just, I have this draw to this cover that I can't really explain. To be honest with you, this cover is a large part of what made me read this book. It's a historical YA dystopian, like, okay, the dystopian part. Yeah, that's, that's me. But historical is not me. YA is not me. And yet I was inexplicably drawn to this book. And I think that a lot of that could be attributed to the cover. So there you go. And uh, finally, the, the last question is, what books do you want to read by the end of the year? And uh, I have about 585 books that I want to read by the end of the year. If you watch my bookshelf tour, you know what I'm talking about. So uh, specifically, I got to go with um, the Nevernight trilogy in general. Like I mentioned, the third book is out in the fall. I haven't read the first book. I don't really like to read or start series until I know I'm not going to be like, I'm, I'm going to be able to continue if I want to continue. It's a total lie. Like I've wanted to read Never Night since the day I bought it. And yet I haven't, but anyways, so I want to read that entire trilogy by the end of the year. If we're going to set lofty goals, let's set some lofty goals. Like I want to read the entire Never Night trilogy by the end of the year. Um, a Thousand Doors by J.T. Ellison is something that I, 
you know, was on Bookstagram and commented like, I don't know, she posted something about a thousand doors. And I'm like, J I'm like, listen, this has been taunting me from my TBR shelf for a really long time. Your post is not helping. Uh, so, you know, I've kind of told her I want to read it soon. And as the editor of that book, um, that might be a commitment at this point. And finally, probably No Exit by Taylor Adams, which is just a book that just won't go away. People keep talking about it. The most recent person to talk about it is Books and La La. Like, yes, I got it from Book of the Month. I've had it. I want to read it. I know it's exciting. People keep telling me it's exciting. It sounds like a suspenseful thrill ride, which is the kind of book that I want. And so, yes, No Exit by Taylor Adams. I'm coming for you. But that's it. That is officially the mid-year book freakout tag. I don't know why we're freaking out. I don't really think we need to, but uh, let's keep it calm and professional. Um, but yeah, let me know what you think about your year with me so far. Tell me what you think about the year to come with my channel and as a viewer and as a reader and let's just strike up a conversation. Let's see where we're at. Let's see where we're at with things. I'm being dumb. Okay. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you all very soon.